please welcome Microsoft's Corporate Vice President, Silicon Cloud Hardware and Infrastructure Engineering, Reynold Desaw. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the summit so far. It's a pleasure to be here at the OCP Summit. Uh, before I jump in, I want to talk a little bit about Microsoft's partnership with OCP and why we're so passionate about the OCP community. Um, you know, Microsoft joined OCP in 2014. And since then, we've made over 50 contributions, all the way from rack design to server architecture, secure, along the lines of security, liquid ocean, and more, and like today, with uh, collaborated with OCP Safe contribution. Uh, we're also proud to have Microsoft represented on the OCP board. Uh, Zaid Khan, uh, who kicked off earlier today, he's on the OCP board as a chair. And we've got a couple of members on the steering committee too, very actively contributing to the OCP community. When it comes to building the Microsoft Cloud, our work to standardize designs for systems, boards, racks, and other parts of our data center infrastructure is paramount to increasing the pace of innovation across the computing industry. We've experienced firsthand that working with the open computer ecosystem, we can achieve uh, standardization, consistency, and interoperability, which are benefits that we pass on to our Microsoft customers. We have consistently tapped into the power of this OCP community to address common issues, working together to identify and ideate across the needs of the future, which uh, today is a lot of conversation around AI. So the buzz around AI is hard to miss these days. I believe that AI has the potential to be one of the biggest disruptor, uh, more so than the invention of the internet, and, uh, and it's going to be more pre prevalent than ever. You know, a recent study found that more than 75% of leaders believe AI will give their organizations a competitive edge. So now they're all asking their question, uh, the question, how can my company seize the full advantage of AI? Uh, with Microsoft Cloud, we help our customers power their AI transformation in three big ways. First is we build AI capabilities into the Microsoft Cloud solutions that our customers are already using today. We're helping uh, them to be more productive, more creative, more efficient, and more innovative. This is what we mean when you talk about a co-pilot for every Microsoft Cloud experience. The second thing is we're making it easy for any organization to co-innovate with our partner ecosystem and build their own intelligent apps uh, and, and co-pilot solutions using the same stack and AI services that we ourselves use. And, and third is we're doing this all on a foundation of trust. Every organization needs to safeguard their businesses, their customers, and their data, particularly in the era of AI where we're all still learning. The Microsoft Cloud runs on trust and we're helping every organization build safety and responsibility into their AI journey from the very beginning. Okay, so now let's take a look at the shift and how it's transforming our approach to how we are building the hardware infrastructure. Okay, so, so here's kind of the problem statement. For decades, our industry has worked to achieve incremental progress on performance per core, performance per watt, memory and storage bandwidths, uh, networking, and we've been eking out gen over gen improvements thanks to the goodness of Moore's Law and, our, and everybody's creativity here. How would the rise of gener generative AI changes all of that? The speed at which AI models evolve is outpacing our, our current innovation, and how quickly we can evolve the supercomputing architecture and hardware is going to be key to meet this new challenge. This is a very difficult problem to solve. The graph you see behind me kind of illustrates the scope of the challenge. And there are many similar graphs you can show that represent this. The large line shows the growth in computational demand for successive generations of the large language models. And by one estimate, that's growing at about 750x every two years. And you can kind of look uh, at the bottom two lines there, the yellow and the, uh, the, yellow and the green line, uh, where, where that improvement on the memory and the storage is growing at about and the network is growing about 2x every two years. So there are very similar challenges, and you can draw graphs like this with respect to power delivery, cooling, and many other dimensions. OK, so with that as a problem statement, we are at an inflection point. And as engineers, 
This is a problem we must step up to solve. We need to continue to meet the ever-growing exponentially demands, exponential demands of the AI uh, of, of AI users, uh, while addressing critical challenges in the hardware infrastructure around cooling, around the energy wall, and, and then also doing this in a very sustainable way. To solve these challenges and meet the reality of AI, we must look for opportunities to innovate what I call across the hardware stack, because uh, there's optimization points in each of these domains, as well as optimization points across the stack. And then we also got to look at it across the life cycle of the development, because, uh, you know, because we got to look at it from uh, how the energy is used, uh, how we are developing it, as well as how we are decommissioning from a sustainable kind of way. This is where the greatest potential lies, and we have a role to play, uh, and we all have a role to play. OCP is a highly independent ecosystem, from chip designers to foundries to system companies like Microsoft. Uh, and, and, and it's a collaborative strength of this community that will help set industry standards and, and with that accelerate the pace of innovation. Although the problem, or should I say the challenge is large, the opportunity and potential is much more. As a community, we need to address these, uh, we need to address this collaboratively and set standards where it makes sense. So with that, as I mentioned earlier, um, designing for AI requires massive computational power. It requires powerful GPUs, new types of processors and accelerators with novel architectures that deliver cutting edge performance with high density packaging and in a small physical footprint. And to manage these massive training data sets, we'll also need to rely on uh, advanced packaging technology and the use of high memory bandwidth. And as I said again, we're gonna to have to do all of this while, while considering, taking into consideration thermals and power efficiency. And since AI supercomputers are essentially also distributed systems, we also require scalable networking infrastructure to seamlessly accommodate these logical clusters uh, of a large number of, of thousands of processors that are spread across sometimes data centers. This is really pushing the boundaries of scalability to unprecedented levels. And if you draw the line out, it continues, it exponentially grows. Uh, so we have made great strides. Uh, we have made great strides in this. The whole industry has done some creative innovations. We've moved from monolithic to chiplet-based SOCs. And we continue to see the power and performance gains in each generation. Now we are faced with the opportunity to drastically shift how our hardware infrastructure can fuel the world's appetite for AI. And as an ecosystem, we have an exciting opportunity. We're kind of on the ground floor to establish the standards on which the hardware infrastructure will, um, will be developed. So, so one of the things, the theme of this year's OCP Summit is scaling innovation through collaboration. And I'm very thrilled to announce the first uh, contribution here, which is, my, uh, which is um, Microscaling formats, or otherwise known as MX. Uh, data types for AI are evolving rapidly and are a major driver for future AI hardware capabilities. Microsoft has been investing in hardware, software, um, data science, IP, and know-how for AI training and inferencing for many years. Earlier this year, we drove the formation of an MX alliance to come together to make advancements in this space. In partnership with AMD, ARM, Intel, Meta, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm, we've standardized a fine-grained um, scaling method for narrow-bit data formats that, that will be used for training and inference AI applications. And this is known as uh, microscaling. Uh, before highlighting the why MX is important, I want to point out that the best things about this specification is that it was created with users in mind. MX was designed to to reduce the use of friction, and in some cases even serve as a drop-in replacement to already existing industry formats. Now let me talk about the benefits of, um, of MX. The MX compliant for, uh, formats basically enable, AI com enable efficient AI computation in a given clock cycle. So what this does is your inference times and your training times reduce, uh, which, which again is a benefit for the customer. Um, and, and in addition, it also, uh, it also is a drive sustainability because now the, the amount of compute we're doing, sorry, the com amount of AI computations we're doing requires 
uh, more, uh, uses much more efficient compute, which again helps with our sustainability, uh, which helps with our sustainability goals. As we push into this ecosystem with our partners, we are confident these advancements and standardization efforts will continue to further propel innovation. So we're incredibly excited to work with key industry leaders uh, across the system and drive the unified standards uh, in AI data formats. Uh, for those that want to take advantage of these uh, benefits or learn more, the spec and an ac academic paper which provides more, more de details uh, will be released through OCP and is also available on the blog. I'm also very excited to uh, announce the next contribution, which is GPU and accelerator management standardization. The increase of generative AI has led to uh, a diversity of GPUs and accelerators from various uh, uh, suppliers, as well as uh, the pace at which it's come out generation over generation has, has grown. But what this has actually done without standards is kind of led to like bespoke models of how you manage these accelerators or GPUs in our AI hardware infrastructure. Uh, so, so GPUs, uh, so this basically uh, is a burden for the hyperscalers, as well as these uh, GPU suppliers, as you kind of work together with each and every new RAV or new generation or new supplier. To address this challenge, thrilled to announce our contribution with NVIDIA, Google, AMD, and Meta on the creation of GPU and accelerator management standardization. Uh, the, to keep up with, and this will help keep up with the exponential needs of AI. This initiative features standardized protocols and interfaces, enabling designs that are agnostics to the hyperscalers through standardization. There are a few work streams that I want to talk about with respect to this contribution that has been, uh, that has driven this. One is a standard-based approach to how we update firmware uh, for the GPUs and the accelerators in the hyperscalers. Uh, second is standardizing RAS requirements for GPUs and accelerators and hyperscale computing. And third is around interfaces. We've accelerated the deployment of GPU-based systems uh, using DMTF industry standards. The benefits are immense, and we predict significant time-to-market improvements for onboarding new accelerators uh, and GPUs, uh, which eventually uh, accelerates the pace at which we can provide AI solutions to our customers. Uh, through OCP, this contribution enables not just a spec, but a method to even enforce these standards uh, with, with the GPU supply, with the GPU and the accelerators, uh, and, and they are not hyperscale specific. Finally, through the lens of scaling AI, this initiative is also a springboard for us as a community to define more areas where we can, uh, where, where we can commonly standardize and scale rapidly. Okay, so I'll leave you today with a call to action. Uh, uh, we are, as I said, we are on the ground floor of the AI, uh, the AI hardware infrastructure, and there's a lot of room for standardization. We've made tremendous progress, but we, but we know where we are at now is not enough. The challenges of memory and networking, as I mentioned earlier, are just the beginning. And so we've got a few we've got several opportunities where we can collaborate together as a community to further accelerate and drive growth. I kind of put kind of my three kind of areas here. But the first is the power or the energy wall. As the demand for AI grows exponentially, the need for power also goes up. Uh, and we've got to be very creative and innovative to, uh, to try to address the challenge because we cannot uh, continue to increase the use of power uh, without any constraints there. So we, have, so we have to innovate in the space. The other is around modularity. We need to standardize and reuse wherever we can. I shared some of the areas of standardization where we can make a lot of our building blocks modular, again, giving more value to our customers uh, at the end of the day. And last but not least is sustainability. Uh, with areas, uh, we got to take care of our carbon footprint as we build this, as we build the AI hardware infrastructure to, uh, for the, to meet the needs of the uh, AI growth. Through this OCP community, we have an incredible opportunity to enable the transformative power of AI throughout the hardware stack and across the industry. So looking forward to partner with everybody to explore new frontiers. And with that, I want to say thank you, everybody, uh, for your time. And I look forward to the continued partnership through OCP. Thank you.